Hello, I'm Judy Stiles. Thank you for joining us for another segment of Spotlight on Senior Issues. This series of programs is looking at topics of interest to senior citizens, but also family members. Grandparents are senior citizens as well as parents. And so if you're in a category where you know someone in that category, you might want to enjoy this program as we continue to look at the issues. And today we're focusing on nutrition, something that pretty much goes across the board, whether you're young or old. But joining us today is Debbie Herbst, a clinical dietitian from Mercy Carthage. And of course, Kelly Hook's back with us as well. So thank you Good for being here. And we're talking about seniors, but nutrition-wise, what we're going to talk about today, pretty much everybody can relate to. Oh, I think that's true, because everybody eats and drinks. So <laughs> we're gonna, we all have these concerns. It's kind of necessary for life. It you know? sure is. <laughs> but when we talk about senior care, and we've been doing a lot on this series of programs, there are some special cases for seniors that maybe some new challenges that come up as you age for senior citizens. Well, I think so. And sometimes I, I like, since I work with a variety of patients, both on the inpatient side and then as outpatients, we kind of deal with a lot of different issues. And um, of course, I'm a dietitian, so you know that that's my turf. Mm -hmm. But it really is the foundation of every other aspect of health. And so often, I think that um, we think about, oh, it's another medication or another treatment, than really setting the foundation of good eating and drinking habits, which before can be you even before right. you start the other stuff, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. And a lot of the ways at times I will approach people by looking at their list of medications and saying, well, now are you aware? Has the doctor ever said to you about how this and this and this medicine has a new, you know, has to do with what you eat or drink? Right. And um, sometimes when you approach it that way, um, it's really helpful and people really don't know that they're eating, that that's, there's so many of their medications that are related back to their eating and their, drinking their habits. habits. So. And you're talking about habits and lifestyles is probably a big thing to overcome. People have gone all their life eating a certain way and suddenly mm -hmm. they're having health challenges that maybe even be related to these live lifestyles. Right. And so it's always important, I mean, we always, just like of any age, we would respect the individual. But seniors are the most diverse group that there is. Right. Isn't mm -hmm. that true? Absolutely. You know, so far as economics and preferences, and so I think it's good to keep that in mind. Um, but if we can just think of those those basics, then uh, I think we can kind of build upon that foundation. And I don't think that radical diets are ever good for anybody, but certainly mm -hmm. not for seniors. So. so today we're going to try to give some of these basic tips, some basic information for people to keep in mind. Of course, each individual is an individual case. And mm -hmm. I'm sure, Kelly, you work with a lot of people, a lot of seniors. You see that as well with your clients. That, yeah. Right, and, and you can see people, like she said, that economically it's even an, uh, an issue because some seniors can afford a lot of fresh fruits, vegetables, and things mm -hmm. like that. Others are on a very fixed income. They might have a small Social Security check coming in. Mm -hmm. So they're trying to make that Social Security check cover their medications, their, mm -hmm. you know, their expenses plus their food. And so they're, the, they're, I think, sometimes the ones that we go in and, you know, they, they don't have fresh veggies and things like that to mm -hmm. eat. And I think, do you have some, even some tips that you can help us out with, with those types mm -hmm. of situations? I think that's, your point is, we really have to be practical. We just mm -hmm. really have to deal with the realities of every situation. Right. Um, you know, I brought a few things along kind of just sort of for interest, yeah, but when here. you talk about fruits and vegetables, there's nothing wrong with using canned fruits and canned vegetables. Okay. You know, some of our seniors are dealing with lim needing to limit sodium or salt, but not all mm -hmm. of them. Canned fruit is typically cheap. Um, okay. uh, you know, it, st it, it holds well. You don't have to worry mm -hmm. about spoilage. Right. Um, some of our canned vegetables, there's really nothing wrong with canned vegetables, and this is a plastic single serve type of a product, so well, it's neat. easy to use. You only use one serving at a time. Um, I think some of those are good ways to go, and frozen foods. Frozen foods can typically mm -hmm. be good as well. Um, so um, I think those are a couple of ideas on fruits and vegetables daily. Um, I also brought my uh, sample there of of orange juice, orange juice sure. nothing mm -hmm. wrong with juice it's controlling the amounts and some okay. people tend to drink too, too much, much. Mm -hmm. as if it were a great health food which it is a very healthy food it's just a high calorie food and if we're dealing with diabetes we would want to control the amount, the amount. Okay. but the other side of that is a serving size of juice which is not a real expensive food especially if you go with frozen um, is one serving of that's fruit. So that's, that's, that's a serving. serving. serving that's mm -hmm. a serving. I need to tell my kids that. <laughs> <laughs> they, they they do not, that is not a serving size in their book of anything. I understand. <laughs> well, I was wondering about for, for these packaged vegetables or the, the canned vegetables, mm -hmm. um, what is the amount of sodium, if you're looking at the label, mm -hmm. that you would want? Because I know I've been to the store and I look at a label, they might be right beside each other. You know, you've mm -hmm. got a can of green beans and a can of green beans. And one of them might have 
500 or 300 milligrams of sodium per serving mm -hmm. and the other one has 150 so is there kind of a an easy way to sort mm -hmm. of remember how much sodium per serving you want to get so that you actually pick the right Food. The right item. Well, that's a. I think that's a really good point. And we teach in our heart failure education mm -hmm. less than 300 milligrams for a serving. For serving. Less okay. than 300. That's kind of that magic number. And like this product, I think had 120. Most of the frozen vegetables um, are almost zero. Yeah, very almost very zero. little. And of yeah. course, fresh fruits and vegetables have no uh, sodium. sodium in them. Also, again, I think it's important to get the bigger picture because some of the frozen meals, of course, some of them are extremely high in sodium. Right. But yes. you can get the lighter version. And even if we add a fresh fruit, bananas, canned fruit. I, I brought mandarin oranges simply. Because because they're soft and they're easy, easy to eat. To eat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and add that to a meal, canned peaches and pears, uh, those are all easy. Applesauce are all good choices, but they get a fruit in. So, so what might happen is, is maybe they opt for, let's say, a frozen chicken breast that might have a little more sodium in it, mm -hmm. but if you're pairing it, it what you're saying, with a mm -hmm. fruit and a vegetable that's lower in sodium, it, it kind of balances, it, balances out. it out. Okay. Mm -hmm. Definitely. For people who have had heart failure, when they're getting fluid around the heart and doc, you know that, that kind of a, a setting, we teach about 2,000 milligrams of sodium a day, which nobody wants to think of 2,000 right. of anything. I mean, that, that'd be complicated. Or think of 600 to 700 milligrams of sodium for a meal. For a meal. So break okay. it down as you look at throughout the day. I kind of so. like it that way, mm -hmm. too. Otherwise, sometimes we end up cutting out some sources of really important nutrients. Mm. That's another point I think that can happen with our seniors is we kind of rob Peter to pay Paul. Mm -hmm. You know, boy, we get the sodium down and we don't eat this and we don't eat that and then we end up, we're losing weight, we're not getting right. enough protein, we're not getting enough calcium, and um, now we're on Makes the malnutrition sense. side. <laughs> right, so you can go to the extremes at the other mm -hmm. end. Definitely. Well, we've talked about a lot of in the series of different cases in involving seniors and a lot of times, you know, seniors are living alone or maybe it's a mm -hmm. couple at home and they've had kids there for years and they have, you say, change of habits. They've been used to cooking for a family. Suddenly mm -hmm. it's cooking for two. You mm -hmm. know, so how can they say, you know, there's just two of us and we need to have that meal mm -hmm. you know they don't want to go to a lot of trouble to cook you know mm -hmm. we've talked about that you know so mm -hmm. how, what are some of the approaches nutrition wise as you're having to do deal with that nutrition but then you have leftovers you know if I'm going to cook uh, mm -hmm. a casserole then I'm going to have it for three days you know those right things. well I think that's a good point I brought a couple of products here too this is a frozen uh, tilapia mm -hmm. and each Tilapia loin is individually frozen. You mm. literally take out two. If you want One four, you take out four. Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> and they're a low sodium, they're a source of really good protein, and they're really tender, which is another good point. Now, not everybody yeah. likes fish, but that's just an idea. Another product that I brought are frozen grilled chicken strips. Mm -hmm. Once okay. again, you can take out the amount you need for that meal, whether you wanted to do it as a salad or wrap it in a tortilla, that's just kind of easy. Mm -hmm. um, I have some uh, recipes and cookbooks that I have in my office and they're cooking for two. Okay. And there actually are resources for that mm -hmm. too, resources. right, yeah. So, so that way you, you actually cook for two servings. Mm -hmm. So, and then and depending on how many leftovers, you know, if you don't mind leftovers, right. gosh, cooking for four or six and then having those planned overs, they, that's a catchy term, planned, planned overs. overs. <laughs> <laughs> We plan to <laughs> okay. have this, you know. So that's another idea. Um, if you don't mind leftovers, mm -hmm. and for people who don't like leftovers, that's okay. Um, ground beef and ground pork lend themselves very well too to just the amount you need for that serving. Right. Like meatloaf, you can fix meatloaf in muffin yeah, tins. Yeah, if you've ever seen that, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you have you just fix however many you want for that meal, rather than the large meatloaf mm -hmm. that you're slicing mm -hmm. and having to deal with it. Mm -hmm. Well, what about when it comes to when you're having those leftovers, the safety and aspect? And sometimes you know I've heard people say, you know, go to mom's house and she's I don't know how long that cheese has been oh, in the refrigerator yes. that sliced lunch <laughs> yes. meat, you know, so people don't want to throw food away in certain generations and perhaps oh. seniors are one of those. Oh, I think that's very much so. And I think it's really important to realize about food safety. We can't always taste or see or smell foodborne bacteria. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's 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 just a fact. So one would have to work carefully with um, with our seniors to because uh, they don't like to waste and I don't mm -hmm. like to waste right. food either. Mm -hmm. But a good rule of thumb is to check that refrigerator every three to four days and dispose of leftovers. Sometimes you can kind of work with them to not have quite as many leftovers, but really, um, since you, we can't always taste or smell foodborne bacteria, 
And if we get older, sometimes the sense of smell and taste is not as, strong. Not as strong. So it's kind mm -hmm. of almost um, a little more important. And a mild case of food poisoning can be a serious Absolutely. illness for a senior. Yes. So I think those are some important points. You know, some of the basics are um, separating perishables. You know, if you're using a cutting board, you never, you always want to mm -hmm. use a different cutting board for There's the chicken here and the vegetables over there. Right, right. over there, that's a good one too. Um, cooking foods to those internal safe temperatures, mm -hmm. which is over 140 for most all of meats. Uh, chicken and turkey to greater than 165. And another one then is when we're reheating leftovers. Mm -hmm. And if we don't have a food thermometer, that's a very cheap yes. investment, but a very easy one to use. A lot of people use. don't, though. No. Uh -oh. I just <laughs> bought my first one yes, <laughs> last <laughs> week for my husband, who decided he was going to start smoking. Oh. And I was concerned sure that the, the internal yeah. you know, temperature right. for our meat would be... It would be cooked. Safe. Mm -hmm. So uh -huh. I bought one at Walmart for fourteen dollars. I'm very oh, proud gosh. of myself. Well, good for you. <laughs> when you're reheating, of course, the convenience of microwaves today. Yes. People just take that and put it on a plate and pop it in the microwave. Oh yes, mm -hmm. I sure do. Well, so long as you last, you know, cook them long enough, and usually they recommend that you heat and then after thirty to forty-five seconds um, stir, stir, so that the okay. heat is d evenly distributed, because yeah. that can be really helpful too. You know, another part of food safety is putting leftovers away promptly. Mm, we don't true. leave them yes. out and so that's kind of tricky but uh, right, that's we've heard always in the summertime you know if you have a picnic put it away don't yes, leave it out. Right that's year-round mm -hmm. somebody forgetting to put empty the pots on the stove while they're having visitors or something like that. And they, that's right. The food's sitting out. And, and mm -hmm. I really recommend when um, families are visiting with their parents mm -hmm. whether it's for a holiday or they're just over for a visit that mm -hmm. they open up the refrigerator and actually mm -hmm. look and see what's in there. Mm -hmm. Not mm -hmm. only looking for things that have expired um, but leftovers that have things growing on them. <laughs> and and also to make sure that there's actually food in the refrigerator, mm -hmm. um, that there isn't just, you know, I've been places where I looked in the refrigerator and there was little more than a bit of milk and maybe some bread in there. Mm -hmm. And the, the um, senior had not been to the store, they hadn't been feeling well, mm -hmm. didn't really want to bother anybody, mm -hmm. and so had very little to eat in the house. Mm -hmm. And that, that's kind of an extreme scenario, but it's one I've seen more than once in mm -hmm. my four years of, of working, working with, with Comfort Care with mm -hmm. patients, mm -hmm. yeah. And you mentioned so, expiration dates, and, mm -hmm. and not only the refrigerator, they have a stock load yes. on a shelf or a pantry. A lot of those stock I've heard piles. people say, you know, they've had a pantry full of food, but those cans never move. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> years later, <laughs> we, we found cans that were ready to explode mm -hmm. or already kind of had some black stuff drooling down the sides, uh -huh. mm -hmm. and you're just going, sell, you know, I don't know uh -huh. what it is, you get botulism or yeah. whatever. Whatever. <laughs> and and then the the one other area we have issues with Deb is is meat uh, mm -hmm. lunch meat. Mm -hmm. So it's tell us about lunch meat because people think you go get your lunch meat and you actually eat on it until it's slimy. They they may have a date on the package. Right. But they open well, the package and, and they and open the package, yeah. so the package says it's going to last till July. But I've mm. opened it now, mm -hmm. and you know how long can we eat this without? And I know seniors are especially um, vulnerable to mm -hmm. uh, illness because of lunch meat. Mm -hmm. I can't remember the name, but mm -hmm. there's an lunch meat goes bad. Yes, there. it mm -hmm. goes bad, mm -hmm. but it goes bad before it smells bad. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, that's a good. Again, it's a good point. Don't necessarily. It's not necessarily smelling or tasting mm -hmm. bad. Seven days is the rule for lunch. Seven Seven days. Okay. Seven days. And so, you know, College that's another kids step. better beware of right. that, too. Right. <laughs> <laughs> the baloney. But dating things when you open them. And, you know, just like we were talking to some of the things I brought along here, like I've got cottage cheese, of course I've got whole milk, mm -hmm. and both skim milk, uh, yogurt, is checking those expiration dates. Mm -hmm. I think that... You know, you think of as we get older, you know, we cannot see quite as well. And that is something mm -hmm. that family members can do as a wonderful benefit, wonderful relatively service, yeah. simple. But gosh, that is just checking some of those And the dates, dates. are always so small. You know, They're so the small, <laughs> so hard to see. So I think that's another really good point mm -hmm. uh, of checking the refrigerator and are those basics in the in the refrigerator just basics of have we got some protein sources mm -hmm. do we have fruits and vegetables do we have milk and dairy products mm -hmm. those are the basics and it doesn't take a lot of food it doesn't take right. a big investment either so so mm -hmm. the, looking at the food aspect of it and now in front of me i have a bottle of water and i know we talk about food as nutrition but i've heard so much about water being very vital for everyone you know young oh, old is. and so forth and i know sometimes seniors may have swallowing problems or they mm -hmm. just feel like if i drink water i have to go to the bathroom mm -hmm. so right. you see that mm -hmm. as a challenge you know for, as well it is and in the hospital setting this can be one of the reasons people are admitted to the hospital absolutely mm -hmm. 
Uh, because they um, are drinking other beverages, whether it's tea or coffee, and water when uh, the doctor, the dietitian says it's at least six uh, cups of water a day, that's at least uh, six to eight cups of water a day, which is 48 to 64 ounces. In bottled water, this is 20, okay? Mm -hmm. So that's like the equivalent of about three of those. Three. And I'm sure that many people would say, oh my gosh, I would float away if I drank right. that much. <laughs> <laughs> so I know that's a challenge. We recommend start early in the day, sipping on water. Right. Always take your medications with water. That's a way to get mm -hmm. water in. And I think it's important to be aware Water means water. That doesn't mean tea so or coffee don't have or flavorings coffee. to it and things right. like that. Well, now flavorings, we you know, for a lot of people, flavorings are a way to be able to drink okay. more water. So these little packets tea, we see a flavor. Right. Of Those are good ideas of flavor enhancers. Mm -hmm. But tea and coffee do not count as water. Okay. 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 And of course, pop does not either. Mm -hmm. So I think that's you. Know, we kind of get that mindset. Mm -hmm. um, and I happen to like coffee, so I always say, okay, what I try to do is I drink water first, and then if I want something else to drink, if I I had water last, then I could have a cup right. of coffee. And if I had coffee last, I got to drink water next. So, what about decaffeinated tea or decaffeinated coffee? Does that, that matter? I think those are ideas. But if doctors not, not told you to drink water, but they don't count as water. Okay. Sorry, Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> good try. <laughs> Nothing against good old water. And, All right. Uh, so if you have, I'm sure you've seen the hospital. They, I've been in hospitals where they give the patient a great big jug yes. of water yes. and say, please mm. drink this. So if you mm. have an elderly parent or someone at home, mm. checking to see if they have water nearby or if they're mm -hmm. you know, following that advice. Yeah. Well, I think that's a good point. It's always having a cup nearby where you yes. sit, you know, on the table, mm -hmm. uh, cold water, and you don't have to drink mm -hmm. bottled water that is not necessary but having right. it readily available and what happens is it can be kind of gradual because as seniors we don't have as strong a sense of thirst mm -hmm. so it's relatively easy to become a dehydrated. little more dehydrated yes. mm -hmm. and when we're dehydrated then your blood sugars run a little higher the blood pressure can run a little higher right. we're more prone to urinary tract infections so many of a our medications of are a lot of bad things mm -hmm. happen. Yes. Um, we're more prone to bed sores or pressure ulcers on mm -hmm. skin breakdown when mm -hmm. we're not well hydrated. So, so um, the younger generation thinks I need water because I'm exercising mm -hmm. and I'm moving. If somebody's mm -hmm. older and they're not moving as much, they still need that water. Very mm -hmm. much so. One really. of the things True. the doctor mm -hmm. had said to me too is, is if you're dehydrated, you experience more pain and a lot of our mm -hmm. elderly that's patients have mm -hmm. inflammation and arthritis mm -hmm. and things like that mm -hmm. and if you aren't hydrating your joints well hydrating mm -hmm. yourself well you get you hurt worse mm -hmm. and so a lot of times even myself if I sense that I'm hurting worse because I have arthritis I'm getting old mm -hmm. um, if I'll up my water intake, intake it will actually help with pain Wow. So well, really what a great strategy. Watching your system and yes. those things. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. So, well, you know, we're talking about the do's and the don'ts. And sometimes people, uh, you mentioned different ch health challenges, diabetes or what it might be, but sometimes seniors say, well, I just can't eat a lot of sugar anymore because I'm going to gain weight. So I'm going to uh -huh. do away with desserts. Uh -huh. Or somebody's told me to cut back on those. Uh -huh. What about those people with sweet teeth? You know, sweet tooth that says, oh, well, I still I've want a cookie. You know, I've got one. <laughs> so <laughs> okay, after, you know, that cookie jar is still sitting there. I won't, don't tell me I can't eat it. You know? <laughs> right. Oh, I understand. Um, I think that's a, a that's a good point too because you know we're going to tell our seniors well you can't drink pop or you can't have chocolate because you got diabetes or right. and I think there's always a balance to that message. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like if we can get the basics down first, we're eating breakfast, lunch, and supper, mm -hmm. we're eating fruits and vegetables daily, um, then a sw something sweet now and then is just not going to hurt you, even if you do have diabetes. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Some of the foods that probably really do a little more damage, should I say, would be regular pop and sweetened tea, mm -hmm. because okay. it's easy to really drink those calories. We don't realize we're, the, we're getting calories them. Are coming in that way. Uh, they do tend to pull water out of the system so they can kind okay. of promote dehydration. For people who have diabetes, boy, does that make your blood sugar go up when you have regular pop or sweet tea because it's a liquid. Mm -hmm. okay. So far as cookies, cakes, pies, and things like that, I think in moderation, all of those things are fine. One of the considerations that we were talking about, I think, before we got started was um, sometimes as seniors, sometimes when we're carrying a lot of extra weight, we because we're carrying a lot of extra weight and there's less and less muscle mass. Right. So the mobility, getting around is just that much harder those poor joints, you know. So again, I think it's a balance to the message. We don't need to cut out everything sweet mm -hmm. and all those, not all the junk food, but if we can focus on the healthy foods first 
and save those treats for treats. That's what to they be are. A treat. They're yeah. a treat. Yeah, mm -hmm. let's enjoy and them. Dessert's a special thing. It's right. not exactly. just you know. <laughs> I don't know when we started thinking. I, I know my kids sometimes think that there's supposed to be dessert at every meal. Oh, mm -hmm. something yeah. sweet mm -hmm. even after breakfast sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> okay, we're, we're, cool. Cool. <laughs> right. we're calling it at right. that. Yeah. You know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, one of the things I, I like you've got carnation, the instant breakfast up here. Mm -hmm. A lot of times I've seen people, uh, my seniors specifically, who just aren't hungry in the morning, but they mm -hmm. need those extra calories. Um, on the other end of being obese, the other end of trying to hold on to yes. some, some of that weight. Talk about those things because I think when somebody is either nauseous because of maybe some medications they're on, mm -hmm. they just don't feel well, sometimes you can get them to drink their calories instead mm -hmm. of having they just don't feel like eating mm -hmm. they don't feel like eating very right, much right and that's a good point of maybe later in the day or it goes to the other end maybe they have an appetite for breakfast mm -hmm. and lunch but then don't feel like they eating much like at eating. supper mm -hmm. yeah. um, carnation brex breakfast is just one product you put a eight ounces of skim milk to it and that gives you about mm, about 250 calories it's the same amount of protein when you mix okay. with a cup of milk as like almost three ounces of meat mm -hmm. it is a great choice um, other products, there is Boost, there mm -hmm. is Insure, yeah, there's some of the high protein drinks like Premier or Pure Protein, all of those you can buy at Walmart. And sometimes it's not like you do that every day, but mm -hmm. they're just in the refrigerator for an option. Mm -hmm. um, so that's helpful. I brought lactose free yogurt because oh, if seniors sometimes develop maybe early in life or mm -hmm. middle years had no trouble with milk and then develop a problem with mm -hmm. lactose, lactose which is the tolerance. sugar in milk oh, right. there's all kinds of lactose free milk there's lactose free yogurt typically um, and I brought Greek yogurt also because mm -hmm. that's a wonderful mm -hmm. easy yes. food to eat it's that's only six ounces and it's got loads of protein loads of protein mm -hmm. that's the same as two ounces of meat on the Greek yogurt so just that's that a great serving. product wow. just one serving so um, those and you know and eggs you know, mm -hmm. eggs are an easy food that's real easy to fix, easy to eat, and right. to chew. Protein so. is there ready to go. <laughs> right, yeah. Right. It's just and really you easy. need that protein to keep your muscles mm -hmm. working. And, and I guess you don't, we're not building muscle at that point, but we, it helps us not to waste away. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Keeping that protein mm -hmm. in, the, in the diet and not, mm -hmm. you know, focusing only on carbohydrates. Definitely. You mentioned an aspect of chewing, easy to chew, and we mentioned mm -hmm. that a couple times. As seniors get older, sometimes I've heard people say, well, it's just hard to chew. I'm not going to chew on a big steak. I can't, you know, mm -hmm. chew on it. Or maybe they have swallowing problems and so mm -hmm. forth. So how does this tie into maybe food considerations? When you're well, I think that, like Kelly was talking about, like checking the refrigerator, you know, something that families can be alerted to um, if the family member, of course, would be a little bit of weight loss, a coughing mm -hmm. and chewing while they're eating, or, you know, putting the hand up here. Maybe they don't say anything, but, you know, you can just being aware of that because right. if you're coughing during eating or drinking that can be a sign that they're beginning to choke. Mm -hmm. um, another easy thing to do is just to be aware of, uh, of dental health, the condition oh. of the teeth yeah, and the absolutely. tongue. Um, Drinking that water helps us maintain mm -hmm. hydration, but what are the gums and the teeth in repair like? What about the dentures? Are they are they clean? Are they mm -hmm. in good repair? Mm -hmm. um, and it works the other way. If the teeth are not in good repair, if we've got those cavities, right. we've got those infected gums, that adds to infection and can cause a whole nother host right. of eating of health problems. So I think that's important to be aware of too. Regular dental care is really important. They all throughout I think, their life. I think, right? Yeah, I yeah. think that's real easy to get so consumed with the other health problems mm -hmm. in the senior years. You know, you've got heart problems sometimes and very mm -hmm. serious things going mm -hmm. on. It's real easy to forget about dental health. Forget I'm, about taking care of your teeth. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The yeah. first step to eating is having good teeth. Absolutely. That's right, and being able to chew. And so mm -hmm. I tried to bring, everything that I have here is relatively soft and easy, easy to, to eat. eat. Mm -hmm. So all of those, I think that's an important consideration. And I just always have to think of someone that, a patient that I worked with recently, and her teeth were in really poor repair, and her blood sugars were really high. Mm. And that was one of the main problems was getting that her teeth cared for and treating the infection in her teeth. And really it can be an ongoing, that infection can travel to other parts of the body. Absolutely. Right. Yeah, it can so. go to the heart, can go to the brain. Mm -hmm. Some serious, serious things problems happen because of your teeth. Because of your, mm -hmm. your Now teeth. while we're here, there's also a bottle on the end, looks like some vitamins. Uh, some oh. people think, well, you know, 
senior citizens take a lot of uh, medis medicines and so forth, and mm -hmm. they may say, well, do we need these supplemental vitamins? You see a lot of advertisements. Uh -huh. You need to, uh -huh. you know, add yeah. this to your list of things that you're taking. Mm -hmm. Well, you'd always want to talk to your doctor first and go over that. Mm -hmm. um, I did bring a Viactive, which is one of the chewable calcium supplements, which are wonderful. You can get mm -hmm. them in calcium, mm -hmm. or excuse me, in caramel. It tastes like a caramel well, chew. The, candy. Mm -hmm. the they chocolate kind, good. they're the fabulous. Chocolate. Yes, they're oh, good. Tastes like a Tootsie Roll, and then mm -hmm. there's vanilla, so they're really good. And also, these, as well as Caltrate, is another product. They mm -hmm. have vitamin D in them. Mm -hmm. Often That's seniors important. are low in vitamin D because we're not out and exposed to the sunlight, and that really helps with bone health, maintaining and preserving bone health. So these are very easy because they taste really good, and they're nice and soft. And we hear bone health, a lot of concerns for women and osteoporosis, mm -hmm. but it can affect the men as well. Very mm -hmm. much so. And this mm -hmm. is a way to prevent fractures. I mm -hmm. did bring along chewable, um, chewable Centrum vitamins. Mm -hmm. okay. Again, you'd always want to talk with a doctor first, but most of us, uh, one good multivitamin a day is really valuable and really right. can be helpful. Um, you know, in the same line as vitamins and uh, minerals, I think is herbs and supplements, mm -hmm. which is something that we ought to kind of, mm -hmm. you know, bring up too, because people can think that, oh, I got it at the herb store. It, it, herb store, it won't hurt me. It won't mm -hmm. be Got to be good. They sold it there. Right. Right. You know, so that's really important that if, uh, you know, any one of us, including seniors, if you are taking any herbs or things that supplements that we got from the health food store that you make a list of them and take them along to the doctor okay. because Absolutely. they can interact with other medications. Well, mm -hmm. and where um, do medica medications came from mm -hmm. a lot of times in the beginning time before they started, they came from herbs. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. for instance, um, a lot of people take an herbal supplement for their cholesterol lowering, but that can interact with the medication for cholesterol lowering mm -hmm. because it's essentially doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. And you can mm -hmm. actually have liver problems mm -hmm. from the supplement. From too mm -hmm. much of that. I right, mm -hmm. yes. right. Mm -hmm. It's Good yeah. point. This is the red yeast, red, ri red rice yeast, something mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good. So. so kind of for education purposes, people are watching, that really keeping informed whether you're the senior citizen or you're the child of a senior or, you know, grandchild. grandchild just, uh, right. you mm -hmm. know, watching what's happening, being aware of the mm -hmm. eating habits. If there's change in habits or, as you say, mm -hmm. go to the house and there's nothing in the refrigerator. And mm -hmm. there's weight, you know, weight loss. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Those are good signs. I, it's kind of like, a, again, you have to forgive me because that's my field, but that's really the foundation for everyone and yes. in, in, in a lot of health issues a lot of health issues can be either improved or present prevented by that basic breakfast lunch and supper mm -hmm. getting fruits and vegetables and enough protein and enough water in uh, every day every day that would that really addresses a, a lot, lot of, issues. of issues that we have today because people are not aware of the impact of uh, appropriate, you know, healthy, healthy and diet. And that goes so. across all ages yeah. of society. All ages. <laughs> <laughs> we're in a hurry. We're, we're, mm -hmm. we're in such mm -hmm. a big hurry. And they mm -hmm. choose the easy way in many cases. Right. And not but it's, it's funny because I'm sitting here going, well, I could get some of these here. Right. For my family. So, <laughs> right. so yes, yes, the tips yes. we're giving can go oh. beyond the seniors. Yes. <laughs> so. I'm always working at it myself. Well, Debbie, I'd like to thank you for being on the program today, providing some nutrition me. information. And Kelly, thank you once again for helping us out with the program and providing this information. And I hope you can join us again for future programs as we spotlight senior issues, looking at other topics of interest for senior citizens and their families. I'm Judy Stiles. We'll see you then.